Hi, welcome to Sway C TV. In this video, we're going to be talking about a topic that I know is near and dear to a lot of you. That's buying land in Africa. And as the title suggests, for me it hasn't been that easy. So we're going to discuss my experience buying land in Africa and how it can help you uh, down the line. Uh, I am not an attorney. I'm not a real estate agent or broker or nor do I represent any organization that would somehow benefit from telling you uh, my experience in uh, buying land in the Gambia. So I just want to get that clear so that you know that I have nothing to gain from this other than you knowing about how my experience has been. And I'm happy to share that information. So let's get right into it. I want to start with the uh, a little bit about how I got here and then we'll go into a few examples of me trying to buy land in the Gambia. So I am from the U.S. I am what you consider uh, diaspora and let's say hopeful. Um, I sold my home and I set out on a little adventure to see the world. Part of that adventure was uh, coming to the continent of Africa and exploring uh, the nature, uh, the environment, uh, and trying to get a feel of uh, the motherland, um, uh, the continent that started it all, if you will. And so that's what led me here. The Gambia was on my radar uh, from the very start. I researched, did my research online, um, not exclusively YouTube, <laughs> Uh, not exclusively YouTube video content makers, but in most part, a lot of video content makers uh, helped influence me uh, when it came to the Gambia, my perception of the Gambia, and what it would be like to seek out and journey into this kind of beautiful country. So that's what brought me here, and I've been here for a couple of months or so. Uh, my initial uh, goal was not to buy land per se, it was just to absorb the moment and that's exactly what I've been doing, uh, absorbing the moment. Uh, it's a beautiful country, uh, beautiful people, uh, interesting things all around that you can explore and uh, it's been a good journey so far. Um, so. Let's jump right into the uh, examples that I have of buying land in the Gambia. Okay, so my first experience, well, I was uh, on my way to the beach and I met this gentleman, older gentleman, and he had mentioned, we got into a conversation, he had mentioned that he knew someone who might be interested in selling some land. And so I said, sure, why not? And uh, I contacted uh, the man he knew, and he had mentioned that he had some land uh, near Jamba Jelly, and that uh, he, that I could take a look at it. And I said, sure, why not? I was happy to do so. And so uh, I did notice during the conversation that he seemed uh, in a hurry to sell the land, which is fine. Well, for me, everything checked out. That wouldn't be a problem. So uh, we had made an arrangement. Uh, I picked him up uh, in Burkama, and we drove over to the property that was near Jamba Jelly. And we took a look at the property. It was a corner property, and it was what you call an irregular shape. Um, me, in particular, not crazy about corner property. There was that junction. And so it tends to get a lot more traffic. Of course, you put a uh, fence around your property. It's, uh, there's a certain level of privacy you get with that. But then there's a uh, certain amount of traffic to go through. And you have to deal with that. So I'm not crazy about corner properties. But I was willing to look at it because it was uh, considered, you know, just another adventure. But I fully intended to buy the property if I thought it was something I liked. 
So we went to take a look at the property, and what he told me when we got there was that the property had been, uh, the plot had been in fact uh, parceled out, and it had been, uh, he said, uh, part of it had been given out to, uh, or given out or sold to other individuals, but that that had not been recorded. So I was a little bothered by that because I knew that if we were going to make this official, it would have to go to the land bureau and they would have to deal with that fact that it had not been parceled out and that somehow that would be, um, you know, part of the process of me buying the land would be to go ahead and record how the land was divided up so far. Um, now, the only problem was, the biggest problem in this particular um, land uh a deal or uh, was that the fact that he I think he kind of expected me to bring money at that point uh, right bring money at that point and maybe give him the money and then just wait on the paperwork and so that kind of uh, bothered me a little bit because um, I really didn't want to take a look at the property I, I didn't know what I was buying so I really did want to look at the property first and then go from there but for some reason, this gentleman, I think, thought that I was going to bring money straight away. And so uh, we were looking at the property, and I just let him know. I said, look, um, I didn't bring any money, and but uh, that uh, I had a problem with the way the, the land had not been uh, parceled out properly or recorded, and that I had to think about it, is what I told him. And he really didn't like it. He, he he really didn't like it. He he. I think he was wholeheartedly expected to get paid a sum of money right then and there. And that's generally not how I work. I need to at least verify that he's a property owner. But the other part of it was that the fact that the land had been not fully what they call demarcated or plotted out, so that um, I wouldn't. Uh, know exactly um, what I was buying until it had been worked out um, how it was parceled out. So that bothered me and I, I just kind of told him I need, had to think about it. Um, didn't back out of the deal per se. I just told him I had to think about it and I, I don't think I ever called him back because uh, again he was quite uh, irate about that. Maybe it's a cultural, Gambian cultural thing. I don't know. But in any case, it, I didn't call him back uh, um, about the property. Um, so that didn't go through for that reason. Because, uh, you know, the way the, currently the land was uh, being divided. And the fact that uh, um, I need to verify that he was the seller of the uh, owner of the actual land. So the second attempt was uh, in a property in Bacama, okay, and I had met a merchant, a store owner, who had mentioned that uh, he would, might be interested in selling some land he owned uh, just, I think, east of Bacama, kind of, if I'm getting that wrong, I apologize, but just east of Bacama. And it's the village, um, uh, I think you, you would say it's, uh, yeah, for the most part, east of uh, um, Saracunda. So just east of Rakam is where the pro uh, property was situated. So uh, we had made uh, arrangements to go out there. He actually drove me out there, which I thought was uh, pretty good. And uh, we took a look at the property. The property was, was actually priced fairly well. Um, my only pr issue with the property uh, was that the ground was particularly hard. Um, I knew if I wanted to live out there, I wouldn't be able to grow anything in the ground because it, it was uh, just rock hard. It was just really hard ground. It was uh, lacking any moisture whatsoever. And so I knew that would be a problem uh, if I wanted to grow, but it's okay if you want to build. Uh, that type of landscape is not bad for building. It actually sets the concrete pretty well. Uh, it's just really hard to dig up. But um, I did like it enough that we proceeded, you know, uh, to negotiate to buy the land. 
So in this case, I actually got an um, attorney, uh, one that he had recommended, he knew. Um, I thought that would be okay, uh, even if he recommended. I didn't know anyone, and I had looked up some attorneys, and it was kind of hard to track them uh, or get a gauge what kind of attorneys they are. You have to make a uh, consultation consultation with them. It's a law of a fee, and they will tell you, uh, advise you what you need to do. In this case, um, this particular uh, attorney um, was a well-known one. It's actually a pretty famous attorney, I, I think, in, the, Bacom, in the, um, the Gambia. Pretty famous attorney. And so we had sat down and um, what surprised me um, when we were trying to, uh, we, I was getting my consultation was that the uh, attorney didn't seem concerned that the, there was, uh, would be any issues uh, that I'd have to worry about. But he didn't uh, seem concerned with the fact that there wasn't a, uh, now he had a title for the land, but I, I didn't see a profile of the land. So while I saw that it was a title of the land, it wasn't associated with a profile. And what he wanted to do is have the land surveyed so that I could be, the, so that we can make a contract and know that he owned that a plot of land. But the attorney didn't seem concerned at all about that. And that, I was kind of bothered by that um, only because, you know, how can you have that much, uh, how can you have that much certainty about anything unless you, you know, and at that point we, we didn't know. And so um, we had um, even discussed uh, when we would have a date to sign a contract. But my biggest problem was that I need to verify that he was the actual owner of that land. Um, and without a profile, it's not that easy to do. You do have a title, and title states um, more broadly where it's located. It does sometimes have a plot number. Um, some titles have coordinate you know, co coordinate uh, coordinates on them to let you know where the land is. But they, and some reference the profile so that you know exactly where the land is. So we were trying to work this out, but it just seemed to me that the process was being rushed and that I needed for certain to uh, check and make sure that he was the owner of this land. Uh, even with an attorney's assurance, I knew that if he didn't know for sure, that even with his assurance, there could be problems if he didn't know. Um, he, knew this, he knew the seller, of course, and he knew that particular area of land. He knew that there would be no uh, issues concerning uh, family rights, that kind of thing. But he, he didn't know whether he was actually the actual owner of that land. Um, that would have to have been proven through the land people. So um, even though I did think the land was priced fairly well, um, I did back out of that deal because I felt the process was being rushed and I didn't want to before I fork, fork, fork over any money or transfer any funds, I kind of have to have some assurance. In America, it's quite different. Or in the U.S., it's quite different. Where I'm from, they have title companies who uh, take a lot of the guesswork out. Um, they determine the lien, the taxes owed on the property. The property owner, they determine that the buyer has the funds, that kind of thing, and they make the whole deal come together. It really takes the guesswork out of buying property or land. Uh, but here in the Gambia, it's a little bit different, a little bit more tr uh, trust that you have to put into the system in order for you to be able to buy these properties. And if you don't know the seller, well, <laughs> it's called blind faith, right? You put your money out there and hopefully things work out for you. Now, there have been a lot of videos uh, about people being scammed out of their money. And I think that's kind of a product of the system, the way land purchases work. Um, from the time you give your money, the fact that you give your money without uh, you know, having the land people being able to 
confirm that that actual land is for sale and uh, by this end of, by the seller is actually the owner of the land. Well, well that gives you the opportunity for someone to defraud or not that they would want to do that, but there, let's be honest, there's people who are uh, not that honest out there and they might take advantage of the fact that you have that additional time to, you know, not do the right thing. So, uh, in this particular case, it was being, the process was kind of being hurried and I, I guess I could have taken some additional time to do that, but it was just the fact that it, that, <laughs> that I'd have to surrender that amount of, uh, you know, a good amount of money for something that I, you know, can't know that, that the uh, seller actually owns the land. Um, and so, for that reason, I just kind of backed away from that land deal because of that, because I, I couldn't, or I think the process was being rushed, and that kind of bothered me that, I, I couldn't do that, but maybe that's built into the uh, system. Um, maybe that trust system is something you just have to have in order to work a land deal here. But in this particular case, I didn't want to be rushed and I didn't want to take the risk. It's a risk versus reward, right? I didn't want to take the risk that uh, uh, this person actually owned the land. When I knew how easy it is to prove that the owner owns the land. You just go to the land people, he can accompany you and verify that this person is the who he is and that the piece of land exists in his name. It's, it, it's really easy to do. And so when you extend that kind of trust, it's really unnecessary, but uh, in order to make the process uh, go quicker, you know, you give the money to them and they, <laughs> Uh, and the, then things happen and you get your paperwork. I believe in certain cases you have to uh, meet people, or maybe a chief, or I think they have another name for it. I don't know if they call it a chief or not. I don't want to use a term that's not used, but I think there may be a chief involved if there's a village or something, and then someone has to put a stamp on the uh, title transfer, and then the last people get it, and I think at that point is where they actually determine if the, the contract can go through or not. Um, you know, the, you do generally sign a contract, but I found this out, they're, they're a little vague. The contracts are a little vague, as we'll talk about in the next two examples. So uh, for that reason, the fact that I thought it was being rushed and didn't want to do anything hasty is why we uh, why I backed out of that deal so the third deal the third deal um, was the reason why I, I, maybe I came to uh, Gambia in the first place I had contacted a youtuber who set up a company a uh, real estate company uh, to support diaphragms uh, moving to Africa, and the primary goal was just to uh, match uh, the aspirants to plots of land that they could purchase, and hopefully they could aid in that uh, diaspirant or individual to uh, own land and build on it. Uh, rather good endeavor, uh, good goal, so I had to communicate with him prior to coming here and told him I was coming here and that I would um, contact him when I get here. So I, that, I did just that. I contacted him when I first got here. Even before I looked at the first two properties, I contacted him. So um, what happened was I got here and I, I went to their office. Now the YouTuber is not based in the Gambia. He is based overseas. I won't get too specific. I'll just say he's based overseas, and so he relies on the Gambian, uh, the Gambian employees to run his uh, operation. And so I went to the office, and when I got there, um, I was told that the uh, there was no property available, that the, all the plots had been sold, and I was like really disappointed. But I guess I was a little surprised also because I had um, 
seen a recent YouTube video that he put out and he seemed quite sure that they did have plots available. So I went back and I contacted the, uh, the owner and I just said, hey, I went there and they said that there were no plots. He said he was kind of surprised because he knew there were a couple of plots left. He said he would contact his people and then um, we, I reached out to them or they reached out to me. I don't know which one it was, but in any case, we did. Uh, I did go back. Um, eventually, it took a few weeks. It wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't right away. It took a few weeks to actually get them to take me to see some land. So then that's exactly what they did. They took me to see a couple of plots, and um, we actually visited uh, a diasporan out there who was uh, building on his land, and that was great uh, seeing somebody actually follow through. But what I did notice, and this had been common in a lot of the, uh, a lot of my uh, uh, trips to plots, uh, to estates or what have you, is that the development wasn't quite matching what I thought or my expectation would be about uh, the diaspora movement to Africa, more specifically to the Gambia. So. Uh, I just noticed that, that, you know, there were maybe one or two people doing things, maybe putting up a fence, maybe putting up a structure here or there, but there, there was no, the, the, the amount of growth that I thought was there wasn't materializing, and I guess I was kind of surprised by that, but if you like your privacy, it's perfectly fine. It's just some people feel more comfortable if they see that the, you know, there, there is growth going on. But in this case, it, it, I didn't see that, and, and not in any of the cases uh, uh, where I went to a, uh, a state or uh, land being sold, plots being sold. So in any case, they showed me the plots, and um, I did kind of like it. I mean, the plots were okay. They were they were okay. I'll just say they were okay. The landscape was okay, and uh, the ground was. Uh, they were a little rough, but you know, that's something you just need, you can get around. You can always do greenhouses or you can do raised gar uh, beds. And you can plant that way, there's ways around that. But uh, so, you know, I kind of like the land and they said, well, we have some other land available as well. And I was like, you know, a little surprised, but pleasantly surprised. I said, okay, let's check it out. So we uh, drove to another uh, piece of land and he said we had plots here as well, and this land was much nicer than the first piece of land. And I was like, wow, <laughs> let's go ahead and let's, uh, no, I'll buy a couple of plots. I wanted to get two plots in that one. It was, I just thought the landscape was so much better. I said, well, let me buy a couple of plots. So we had a tentative deal for me to buy a couple of plots there, and uh, what happened was, and it, it took a little while for the um, contract to materialize, uh, maybe a couple of weeks or so, if I remember, recall correctly. And so when I got the contract, I, I noticed the company name was different than the company name I had to expect it to be dealing with. So I went back to the original owner and I said, uh, I asked him about it. Well, long story short, the his employee or the guy he had running the office was kind of working his own deal and he was siphoning off customers from the original owner and while that's okay for some people some people just consider it um, you know a part of the way things are you know but it kind of bothered me a little bit that that was happening because my intention was to support this guy who had this endeavor to help people. And so I told the guy, I said, look, uh, you know, I do did like the land and the prices were okay for me. And, um, but you know, that, that bothered me to the point where I just couldn't get past it. Uh, so I said, I, have, I backed out of it and um, I didn't follow up with the original owner because I felt a little, I'm embarrassed that, that this guy was trying to siphon off me from this other guy. And I, I didn't really follow up to get the other plot because I, 
actually, I didn't know what the company was going to do at that point because apparently there was some issues. Of course, there would be about this guy doing what he did. And so what had happened was I said, well, no, let me just leave that situation alone um, and we'll try something um, I think that uh, I thought that would be best at this point because at this point I just kind of want to get something done and maybe that's the wrong attitude but I just kind of want to do something now uh, we can talk about prices now or we can talk about them in another video but let me just say that in other YouTube videos there have been claims of the prices being people getting free land right um, uh, prices being low, below a thousand, a thousand dollars U.S. for a plot, maybe 20 meters by 20 meters, you know, that's standard, pretty standard. And um, that would be about 65 meters by 65 meters in, in 65 feet by 65 feet in U.S. So what I found is that I couldn't find anything like that. I couldn't find any land priced at that level. I could, certainly couldn't find any free land. And if you know any uh, people giving away free land, just go ahead and enter the comments and we'll follow up with that and see if we can get some. But I didn't find any of that. I didn't find anything less than $1,000 US. In fact, everything that I saw was north of $2,000, $3,000 US. Now, for some people, that's not a big deal, right? If some people think that's very affordable, but for other people thinking, hey, I can get cheap land, well, you might have uh, you might have some issues finding that cheap land. Now, unless you have a contact or source that you know that you can get this land from, great. You know, that's an opportunity you shouldn't pass it up. An opportunity to get free land in another country, well, that might work out pretty well for you. But I, I haven't found that to be the case. And that's part of the reason why I'm saying, as the title suggests, you know, it may not be that simple to get this uh, buy land in the uh, Gambia. So, finally, the my last attempt, and this is an attempt I'm working on right now, um, the way it came about was, after going through so many real estate brokers, and there are a lot of them, uh, real estate agents here in the Gambia, a lot of them. And I went to a lot of them. A lot of them said they didn't have anything available, uh, and they referred me to other agencies, that kind of thing. But this one agency seemed quite sure that the people I'm dealing with now would be able to help. So I said, okay, let me try these people and go from there and see what happens. So when I went to this other group, I went there with uh, high hopes. I'll leave the name out of it right for right now uh, because we are in the process of uh, purchasing land. But this is how it came about. So on the recommendation of this other real estate agent, I went to these people that wanted more reputable firms in Gambia. And I figured, well, being a more reputable firm, they're going to, you know, have the more ideal path for purchasing land. And so I, I went there and um, we did take a look at some land. Um, the land was, uh, again, a huge development. Um, I, again, there were a few uh, builders in this development, but a big development. And there was some building going on, but again, it was just basically a couple of structures here and there, and, uh, and that was it. Um, but it was a great location. It was a very, very good location, in, in fact. And so the only issue was that it was going the rate the uh, price of it was uh, very high um it was reasonable for in terms of uh other plots in in that area 
but it's higher than say rural areas, much higher, because uh, it's in the it's in the uh, um, in the city or in the township. Uh, so it was much higher, and so I had to consider putting a large amount of money into this plot and whether I would see any return on it or at least maintain its uh, current value. And I wasn't exactly sure that it would, it was just that high of a price. But um, it was something I would be willing to consider. But uh, I told them that if they had something else that came up, maybe in a more rural location, maybe something a little bit more reasonable, um, I certainly could look at that. So that's exactly what happened. Uh, maybe a week or two later, I noticed on the website some more developments, and so I, we went to go. Uh, no, we didn't went to go see it. Just solely based on what I saw on the website, I said, "Well, the location is uh, very nice, very good location for me, and the price, even though it was, uh, it's again." <laughs> Nothing even close to uh, two thousand dollars for a plot. Nothing even close to that. Uh, but you'll find that that number is you know, you're not going to find too much of that going on, unless it's like way rural, way rural. And the thing about that, the one thing about the location is that you have to be able to make sure that you know at least you can get your building materials out there and build your structure. Um, so you don't have to worry about utilities too much as long as you have a well, as long as you have your solar, your soak away, um, you know, you're pretty covered as long as you can get those three things operational. And if you want gas, well, that's just a matter of having a propane tank. You can have a, you can get your gas that way. So it's, but you do have to be able to get the, the, um, uh, materials out to the land site, uh, whether the wheels of the way, you can, uh, if they can take you to see the land, then presumably most vehicles can get materials to the land. So in any case, I don't want to be out way, way out that far. I didn't want to be, but I want to be reasonably close, maybe an hour away from the airport, right? Just for convenience. And that way, if you have to go into Saracunda or something like that, and, and jewel or something you can it won't be that bad on you but um in any case so the, the location was ideal and i told her i said look I, we can buy something and so um, just based off of the information we got off the website uh, we went ahead and um i went ahead and, and we're tempted to purchase a piece of land um <sighs> The, 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 there are problems, okay? There are problems, unfortunately. Um, now, without getting too much in detail, uh, the land itself uh, has not been, let's just say, has not been officially uh, acquired so that uh, they are brokering a deal right now, uh, what I'm being told. Um, so, you know, it's just the, the fact that this, this is one of the bigger uh, real estate firms here. And even the bigger real estate firms, it, the process is just not the way you would think. It's not as clear cut as you would think. And so you see a piece of plot of land being offered, you think you put your money down, then you get your contract paperwork and then it's just a matter of going through the process. But in this case, it's not exactly so. Uh, the contract that we signed stipulates 18 weeks. That's over four months. That's not a short period of time. That's actually a long period of time. Especially if you're looking for land right away. That's actually a long piece, of, uh, uh, it's a long time to wait. And uh, so we'll see, We're, we still have a couple of months to go, um, but now, I don't know, it's, it's just kind of uh, tells me that, you know, if you want to secure land here in the Gambia, I think the one good way of doing it 
and that is to know the seller personally. Um, maybe through a family member, uh, through a friend, through a family member, you know, uh, somebody where you can put trust in the seller that that land is going to be delivered to you once you make your payment, once you pay for it, you know that land is going to be delivered to you. The best way to do that, again, is through a family or friend. Those, that's how the, the deals, I think, get done here in the Gambia quickest. Anything else, is, I think, is a risk. It's going to be a risk for you, especially trying to purchase land from uh, overseas. Now, you can have an attorney, but they are overseas. They are not there <laughs> where you can you know, kind of gauge who they are or how their ethics may run. And hopefully they're good attorneys. I mean, hopefully you hire a good attorney. Hopefully the chip falling you uh, where they may and you get someone who's going to do a great job for you. But the, 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 the uh, opportunity for, for uh, scamming exists through distance and time. If they're far enough away and they have enough time to do wrong things, they'll do wrong things. It's just the nature of people. It's not a Gambia thing per se, uh, but it's, it is how it is. So it is what it is in the Gambia. So again, as the title suggests, you think you're gonna buy land and uh, it's gonna be easy. Maybe not, maybe not so easy. Maybe it's going to be a challenge, but I'm telling you that if you know the seller, and you can put your trust in the seller of that land, then it's going to go more smoothly for you. So that's what I would suggest that you do. You know the seller. However, you can do that through uh, maybe a Gambian, lots of Gambians and uh, overseas, you know, network with a Gambian and see if you can have, they have family members or friends who they can vouch for. And your land deal can go through it. I wish I had known that that's actually a great idea for buying land in another country. It's actually a great idea. But my hope uh, was that I could, uh, you know, run across a reputable enough firm or something that could, you know, make a deal happen. And so we're in the process now. We'll see what happens. I'm not uh, particularly confident, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and so, you know, Final thoughts, you know, just be careful, you know, just use common sense. Uh, network is the best way to do it. Just network, just find an organization maybe with known to have Gambians in it and just network, find these people who you can hold accountable uh, based on U.S. standards, uh, whatever they may be, you know, uh, somebody you can hold accountable by U.S. standards because they're in the U.S who have connections in the Gambia, and I think you'll do fine that way, you know. But uh, for me, we'll see the verdict's still out. I think four attempts is a little bit much, and uh, again, a lot of that is trust issues that have been nurtured and cultured through uh, American uh, U.S. regulation. <laughs> So that's maybe that's much is on me, you know, <laughs> maybe that much is on me. But this is information for you, uh, for those of you seeking um, uh, a more fulfilling lifestyle, whatever that may be. So I was happy to bring this information to you. If you have any questions, well, go ahead and comment and uh, you know, I'll try to answer those. If you know anybody giving free land, definitely hit me up <laughs> and let me know. Uh, and maybe we'll go take a look at it. Maybe we'll see what the, you know, what that's about, if, the, if it's available. Uh, maybe I can give that information, transfer it, give it to somebody else who can, uh, you know, do something with it. That'd be awesome. Uh, subscribe if you like. This is a new channel. It's not one born out of ambition or, or need to attain a uh, level of wealth. It's just me giving you my, sharing my experiences. So that maybe you can make it easier on, maybe you can make it easier on one of you in the future and make your path a little bit uh, more, a little bit better. So uh, again, I'm happy to do that. And for the next video, we are going to discuss, uh, we're going to discuss my recent uh, trip on Ethiopian Airlines. Um, 
which was pretty interesting. I think you'll get a kick out of it. It's a little bit on the lighter side, if that's what you want to call it. But uh, it's pretty interesting what happened to me uh, during the, my Ethiopian Airlines trip back to the U.S. And uh, I think you'll get a kick out of it. Well, it's been a joy. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.